Today we're going to address uh, changing the valve stem seals on a, a Nissan H20 engine. This is the version 1 engine and uh, as you can see it hasn't been taken very good care of. It's got some crusty junk on the uh, rockers and the valves and whatnot, so it hasn't had many oil changes but uh, the concern is that it burns quite a bit of oil and when I filled it up with oil the last time I did an oil change I noticed that it uh, really smoked after that so it's when you pour it into the uh, valve cover area it just leaks past the uh, valve seals so I did a compression test on it and I've got the minimum compression on all cylinders the uh, factory spec is 155 psi and I achieved that one of them was actually higher so I thought it might have some deposits in the cylinder so I ran some Berryman's uh, through the engine I just sprayed it into the carburetor holding the throttle open and it blew out a lot of smoke doing that. I'll post a, a link to that product so you can take a look at that if you're interested. So we'll kind of go and take a look at what it takes to do the job here. So one thing is you'll need a, a means of compressing the valve springs. We're not going to take the head off so we'll use this tool here. It's a cheap thing that's easy to obtain. Going to need to take the uh, valve cover off. Hopefully the camera can handle the change in light. So this is a 22 millimeter for these guys, 13 16 for the uh, spark plugs. I've got new spark plugs plugs gapped at 30 thou of an inch, and these are Denso U groove. That's for the Nissan H20 engine. You're going to need a means to keep the uh, valves from falling into the head. So you, this is a Bosch uh, compression tester and it uses like a regular air chuck for the quick connects. So you use a, uh, the M14 LR, whatever that is, that fits into the head. So it can compress the uh, cylinder doing that. Valve cover gasket. Then the, uh, the valve seals are kind of neat. They actually get held down by the valve spring. So uh, and then I've got just some instructions. I don't know if we'll be able to see anything on here or not. Anyway, this is the uh, just tells me to set the uh, spark plugs to 30 thou. And then I have another manual that talks about how to uh, retorque the uh, rocker arm. So that's the the trickiest part of this whole job is to take this rocker arm off. There's only there's four bolts there. So you'll take them off slowly and evenly so you don't bend the rocker arm. You leave the uh, valve adjustments alone and then uh, you'll check it when you put it back together. Make sure the push rods haven't fallen out of the uh, lifters. And then uh, bring it back up to temperature. You gotta get the thermostat open, so like 85 Celsius uh, for temperature then you'll set the uh, valve clearance again. So that's kind of a quick rundown of the job. So uh, I'll get the camera set up on a tripod and we'll uh, start doing this. All right, so the uh, rocker cover bolts are uh, 17 millimeter. So I just start uh, cracking these loose and going across. So I'm a little bit concerned about the oiling of this engine. I see there's more oil at the uh, forward side of the engine than the rear where the fan is. So when I have this apart, I'm going to look for oil passageways and see what I can do to clean them out. And there should be tension on these bolts all the way because we're uh, taking the uh, tension off of the uh, springs. And again, like I said, you just try to take your time with this so you don't bend the shaft. And you need a torque wrench to tighten this back up.
I think we're just about there now. So if you're due for an oil change, you would do it after doing this job because inevitably there's going to be junk that falls down into the uh, crankcase. Let's take that guy off. There's definitely an oil hole just adjacent to each of those uh, rocker bolt holes. And uh, aside from that, it's pretty basic. I'll just stop the camera and get it closer. There right, so you can see those holes where the oil would come through into the uh, rockers. So we just have uh, eight of these to do. It's the same valve stem seal for each of them and it's the same gap for the tappets as well. So it's uh, not a hard job to do. I just have to go over that and see uh, where the oil might be going. This one's a little bit different. It has a uh, set screw there. So that's the uh, airline there. I don't have a regulator on this compressor. It just cuts out when it hits 150. So it looks like we'll be putting 150 PSI into the engine. It might turn a little bit, but uh, I don't see it spinning off and rotating too much because the valves can't open at this point, right? It's completely sealed. If you had to, you could uh, block the uh, pulley or the uh, bell housing here, ring gear. So uh, I'll get the camera set back up and we'll hook up the airline and we'll pop out uh, a spring. All right, so before we get started here, we have to prepare the uh, air adapter. You can get the focus. You can see that it has a uh, a valve core in there. So the uh, Bosch kit comes with a, a tool for removing the valve core. So you just put that in there, take that out. Otherwise you wouldn't be putting any air into the cylinder and you drop your valve valves in the engine right away, which would be very annoying. So you'll see I put some tissue over the uh, push rods and the oil drains for the uh, push rods are all at uh, are just at the push rods, so you just have to cover that location. This valve core is being stubborn; doesn't want to come out of there. It's kind of strange. Might have to destroy it to get it out. Nope, got it. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna put the adapter back on. It's uh, clear through, there's no more valve stems in it. Place this in through the uh, spark plug hole. Now, so it might get a bit noisy while I'm doing this because the, the compressor could possibly turn on. But basically what you're doing is you're gonna listen for air leaks. And if you have some huge air leak, you know that you don't have a cylinder 
pressurized and there's a problem. So you'll use a, a magnet to retrieve these uh, valve keepers after you get the uh, things compressed. Yeah, it's starting to spin the engine. All right, so leaking a little bit, but I would say that's an acceptable amount. The uh, compressor is going to come on. It's actually leaking. So most of the leaking is taking place at the air fitting. But we're keeping up, so there's no big deal. So now, you'll see that this has a jog in it that you need to match the jog of the springs. Kind of grab the lower springs that you can. And It'll, it'll look like nothing is happening. You have to push it down as you remove tension. There. Now the spring is loose, but the valve hasn't fallen in. So that's a, a really good sign. So now it's hard to get the first valve keeper out, but once you get it, the second one is not a big deal. Compressor here for a second. I got to turn it back on. Otherwise, we'll be in for a bunch of extra work. So that that's as easy as the job is. You got to do that eight times. So we'll do some uh, cleaning of the area. Make sure there's no trash under here, and uh, we'll take this over the table. I could feel that it's a really the rubber is really hard on this thing. Look, I'm gonna just start cleaning here, then we'll get back when it's ready to put on the uh, the new one. All right, so we got that uh, cleaned up. Just take some fresh engine oil and put it on your fingers. Wipe it around here. Put it in the uh, both sides of the uh, valve seal. And just drop it on. Some of them will have a plastic guide to put them on for the engine. Unfortunately, these ones don't have that. So you could tear the seal putting it on. It went on nicely. Take that. I've already cleaned the valve keepers. I didn't find anything unusual with them.
just put a little bit more oil on the top there. So that's uh, the first cylinder. I just want to see if we've got that all or not, if I need to shoot it on a, a second cylinder. Hopefully you're able to see all that. So like I said, I'm going to work my way across, cleaning off each of the valve assemblies as I'm going. And then we'll have to start working on the rocker cover after that. So I'm just going to scoot my way across. Don't forget what cylinder you're on. Keep a track of what your air is hooked onto. I know I can do one more, then I got to move my air line to the next cylinder. And uh, work your way across the engine until you get all eight of them done. Alright, so I found the culprit on the uh, second valve. So what happened was, you get a shot, the uh, skirt broke off from the uh, rest of the valve seal. probably the uh, cause of the oil burning in this engine. So I'm happy to do this. It's not an expensive job. The steel is only a couple dollars each. You probably do it for under $50 all in. Alright, so major discovery. It turns out that only one of the rocker arm perches has oil coming out of the block. So it comes out of this one here with the hole. And it fills up the rocker arm so the tube is hollow and it's capped on both ends. Then it comes out to uh, each of these push rods and each of the valves. We'll take a look at that. You'll see here that there's a little hole. Let's check and see if we can see anything. So I can't. Hopefully you can see that there's a hole beside each of these parts that touches the uh, valves. And additionally, there's a hole in the back side for the uh, push rod. So each of those has that. And this thing was quite filthy, so I've cleaned it off the brake cleaner. But now it's not lubricated anymore, so I'll have to pour some oil on this before I uh, put it back into the engine. Alright, so things are progressing well. So uh, if you look on here, the uh, rocker shaft, just the third row, is 22 to 29 foot pounds. And then the uh, hot valve uh, gap is 15 thousandths of an inch. So those are the two things we're going to need to look at. I've just got one more cylinder to go. I found another uh, seal that was ripped in half. It was on the uh, third cylinder to the back, which was also my highest pressure cylinder. So it could have been uh, fouling that cylinder quite a bit and uh, increasing the compression. So I'm just going to do the last cylinder here, and then we'll start putting things back together. Alright, so we got all the uh, valve seals changed now. On the uh, forward cylinder, both of the seals were torn, with the ends removed. So now we're going to start putting it back together. So 29 foot-pounds is kind of an awkward torque. It's kind of high for a, a quarter-inch drive, and it's really low for a half-inch drive torque wrench. So we're going to be very careful when we do this. So uh, I already went over all of the uh, push rods and I can feel that they're recessed in the uh, lifter. So I just put a bit of oil in these. It's a bit awkward, but got to do that. A bit on each of these. So I've already cleaned the uh, bases where the rocker pedestals go. I know that they're clean. The bottoms are still clean as well. So we will uh, drop this in place. What you're trying to do is push all of the uh, adjusters backwards so they're sitting in the cups. 
And because it's an awkward torque, we're just going to use a regular socket to get things to where we think they need to be. And we'll do the final torque with the torque wrench. It doesn't hurt to go and find something and just to test that your torque wrench is clicking at that value because sometimes it'll click and sometimes it won't when you're down low like that. It might just make like a very uh, small indication that it's ready to go. So now we're just slowly working our way across here and get this thing tightened down. I think we've pretty much got all of the bolts seated now. All right, we're ready to give it a try. So don't go pulling crazy on this thing and don't short out against your battery. Yeah, so it's uh, not clicking. I'm gonna have to try to find my other torque wrench to do this. It's just too uh, low on the torque value. So let me just shut this down for a minute. I tear apart the garage looking for the other torque wrench. All right, so my uh, quarter inch torque wrench only goes to 200 inch pounds, but 30 foot pounds times 12 is 360 inch pounds. So what I'm doing here I don't know if you can tell, the beam is just clicking right there. So I've got them all tight. Now I just verify with this wrench that they feel like they're at 30. And they do feel at 30. So we're good there. Now we need to do a couple of things. We're going to verify the uh, valve lash. That one's tight. Loose. So that seems good for just the initial check. Pour some oil on just to go to everything here. I suspect that this is going to be loud when we first start it up. Because I've taken the oil out of everything. I could possibly take that screw out and fill up this cavity. Bear with me while I look for a screwdriver. It is not jumping out at me. But uh, so to check the valve lash, you just put a screw driver in here and you can rotate the engine over with the uh, ring gear. So I did another video about this and like it's really very simple. You only need to check it in two locations. So you'll go over and figure out which valves are at their maximum. You'll check for 15th out. So I just have my feeler gauge here. I'm a bit high. So what it says to do in the manual is set it at 15th out is cold when you take it apart. Then get it up to 80 degrees and set it again at 15th out. So I've got another video that shows you how to do that. And uh, so I'm going to skip it in this video. You're welcome to watch the other one. It's not very long at all. 
it's like I said, it's a pretty simple task. All you're going to do is just verify that you don't have some crazy gaps here on these uh, tappets, and then uh, we'll get it started up. So I'm just going to go over it quickly and check where we're at, where we're at, and we'll start up the engine. All right, so the uh, valves are all feeling like they're good. I got everything back where it was. There's no debris underneath of the uh, rocker towers or anything. So I didn't need to adjust anything. It is a bit loose when the engine is cold, but I'm not going to bother adjusting it because it feels like I checked and it's close. It's within a couple of thou of what it was originally when it was set hot. So now we are going to start up the engine. I'm just going to leave the rocker cover off. I want to observe the oil and see how it's flowing. And then again, you need to get the engine nice and hot so that you can do the uh, final valve setting. We'll give her a bit of choke. Eventually we'll fix the starter. Not today. So that was a success. Just because I was working on the engine, there is a fair amount of haze coming out of it, unfortunately. So I'll run it later in the day when it won't, it's less likely to bother anybody. But we're getting it up to temperature. The other reason to run it after you do work on the engine is that you've uh, put a bunch of humidity in the cylinders using the compressed air. Like if it's anything like it is here in Ontario, it's got fairly humid summers. So, uh, your air is going to have a lot of humidity in it as well, like your compressed air. So I think that's it for this video. I'll put a bunch of information in the video description to help you uh, select parts and tools and whatnot if you don't have them. So thank you for watching.